I disagree. So we asked you guys your opinion for what were some of the best comic book reboots and what were some of the worst. Hot takes, as always. Hot takes. <laughs> I mean, we were looking for them, so they came. Right. <laughs> Love a good hot take. <laughs> Damon Williams said, Rebirth was so amazing. I was beside myself when I saw this panel. Then the kickoff of all the new books had me so intrigued. All of the DC characters were trying to figure out where time went and what the hell had happened. Our Leon Shelley gave us a list. He said, Valiant, Giant Size X-Men, and New 52 were his faves. <laughs> so Tyrus Galanos, worst, Heroes Reborn. Best, Ultimate Marvel. I, I can totally co-sign that. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Matt J. Rawson said, The fall of the mutants back in 1988 pretty much set the gold standard for how to properly reboot a series. Yeah, there you go. Any, what, any, any hot takes from you on the best uh, relaunch or reboot in comics at all? I like the Archie relaunch, yeah. which you know seems like you were going to expect me to say that. Or I mean, yeah. But anyone would expect me to say that. I got X-Men, you got Archie. That's how this <laughs> right, works. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> we, at least we're consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked, um, I liked the way that they took it in a, a more dramatic way, and it yeah. kind of it felt more relatable. I mean, yeah. part of the appeal of the Archie characters is they're like, you know, the girl next door, boy next door type thing, mm -hmm. and that's what Archie and Betty have always been. But in the old, the old comics kind of functioned as almost like a comic strip in some oh, way. Yeah, and there was no sure. real continuity or storytelling other than the same characters were yeah. constantly, constantly involved. So I like that they rebooted and took it in a, a more realistic way in terms of like how high schoolers interact, what kind of things get under their skin, the yeah. way they scheme against each other. Mm -hmm. So. No, no, I, I, I completely agree. Like, you know, I mean, I've said this before. I kind of came into Archie because of Ninja Turtles and then started reading <laughs> the other Love Archie that. comics. Like, I was reading, uh, you know, Archie's RC Racers and Laugh mm -hmm. and a bunch of other stuff from back in the day. But I, I remember specifically s s noticing the shift. Mm -hmm. Actually, it happened for me with Archie versus Predator. And I think before that, oh, it was okay. um, uh, after Afterlife with Archie. Yes. There you go. Um, but yeah, and like at first I was sort of like, I don't know if I like this. And then like, it kind of like immediately after I had that thought, I was like, actually no, this, this makes right. a lot of sense. It does. Like, yeah, and it's not, it's not dishonest to the heart of what these characters are. No. Like, you know, it just, yeah, it's a good, it's a natural progression of things that like keeps yeah. it up to date. Cause we, uh, I showed you that video earlier this week of just like, the characters have been kind of in the same stage right. for like a very long time. Yeah. So, you know, this is a nice sensible change, I guess I kind of should, right. should say. Um, for best, for me, mm -hmm. uh, Age of Apocalypse, actually, which was like this short-lived X-Men run. <laughs> surprise, um, surprise. Uh, it was a short X-Men run in the in like the mid-90s. Um, basically, they did a whole time travel thing, which, okay. you know. Um, and the idea here was that, like, what if Charles Xavier had died in front of Magneto during their early, when they were friends? Wow. And Magneto was like, well, I have to fulfill his dream. I have to fulfill his dream. Mm -hmm. But what they do is really interesting because Magneto's tactics are very different, of course, from Xavier's. Right. But also, there's something integral about the hope aspect of Xavier mm -hmm. that allows the world to proceed pretty normally, despite like the mutant hysteria that's mm -hmm. always kind of coming around. Right. With Magneto in charge, it's completely, literally post-apocalyptic. Like, wow. like, yeah, like he's supposed to be the savior of humanity, but right. in a lot of ways, what they've done here is like created this kind of dystopia, mm -hmm. like because apocalypse has taken over, he's created like human concentration camps, all stuff. So he's just not as he's effective but ineffective at the same time. Right. So yeah, it was like an interesting dark take. Like Bishop was at the center of it. Jean, they did like all cool, like these little cool things, like Jean Grey and Wolverine were together instead of Cyclops. Oh. Cyclops had lost an eye in a fight with Wolverine over Jean Grey. Mm -hmm. Like, Cute. yeah. You know, like the the summers were like you know teaming up with Mr. Sinister. It was it was fun. It was a cool yeah. time. It was a great time to be an X Men fan. Um, any worst ones for you? I don't know that nothing comes to mind other than like just like a general hot take that I think we're stuck right now in this weird thing of like reboots and relaunches. Yeah, that it's are a cycle. Super not necessary. Yeah, yeah. Which feels a little contradictory because I just sat here and said how incredible I thought the Archie, Archie reboot was, right, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of feel like across the board, like, there's no way we're, like, out of good ideas enough to the point that we're, like, redoing things. I, you know, I, like, I've heard people say that a lot of times when, like, I, you know, I'll go see a movie or something of that nature and someone will be like, oh, well, you know, it can't be that good because, like, there's no new ideas out there. And I'm just like, I don't believe that. I don't either. I hate that mentality, too. Right. Like, I just have never accepted that. Um, yeah, and so this this cycle that we're in, which is a cycle that comics always go through. Right. Like, it's not even anything new. Like, there's always a reboot. There's always a relaunch. And sometimes they're necessary, but sometimes yeah. they're not. Um, for me, I think the worst thing, it's not a, partic a particular thing about reboots, mm -hmm. a particular reboot, but it's like the worst thing to me about reboots is when they don't see them through to their conclusion. When they just oh, start them. yeah. And then, like, 
things don't pan out the way that they want them to, and things like they just end. I'm thinking of like there was a new Universal relaunch. It started mm -hmm. off really great. Recently, the Wildstorm relaunch, which I guess is kind of not going to happen anymore. <laughs> Like it went in a direction and we got to a point where it was like really kind of like kicking off and like they were gonna go in a cool direction with the authority. And it sounds like it's just not gonna happen anymore, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that kind of sucks. I yeah. think they relaunched the uh, Squadron Supreme as Supreme Power and that was like a really cool relaunch and then that just kind of dissipated and kind of ended and just got worked right. into the Ultimate Marvel Universe. It was weird. But um, anyway, we bring this all up because right. of the DC situation right now. There's this Generation Zero, yeah. and a lot of people are not happy. No. And I mean, I'm gonna say like, I, I shouldn't say a lot of people. What we've been seeing is some unhappy customers, potential consumers. Right, and I, I'm always kind of wary of stuff like that because you, you get out there and say your opinion when you either really like something or you right. really dislike something. Right, yeah. So right yeah. now, it might be a little uneven in the favor of people that are against it, but there was a lot of angry folks on Twitter yeah. after DC announced Shocker their title. Twitter. Right. <laughs> Crazy, where else would they be? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just ranting and raving about like DC doing another relaunch and it feels unnecessary and they should just commit to their storylines. Yeah. Oh. I mean, but here's the thing. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I don't have any inside track on this at all, but right. there's, we don't know if it's, a, if it's a reboot or not. Like it's yeah, a, DC hasn't said that. Everyone just kind of assumed that right. it was a relaunch. It's a time travel story, clearly. Oh, well, right. I, I shouldn't say clearly, but like it involved the Flash. The Flash right. historically has always like been a character that could do things with time, time travel in right. particular. Um, you know, you got Doctor Manhattan at play. You got uh, the uh, Mobius chair at play here. Um, you know, Superman's aware of a previous timeline. Things are things are lining up, and I think this personally, it sounds to me like this is an extension of Rebirth, Ooh. but with a time travel element to it, right. which they kind of have to do if they want to establish, which they they promised from the get-go DC did. When they did Rebirth, they said, we're going to explain where all the key events in the DC universe take place okay. so that, that we can structure a timeline around it. That was like their initial concept for Rebirth. It's like, right. we're going to give you a hard continuity of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, et cetera, right. et cetera. So we all have a clear idea of where the timeline's going. Yeah. And so I think this is what this is. Like the Generation Zero thing is just a fulfillment of that promise of like, right. you know, we're just, we're like we said with DC Rebirth, we're taking this idea and we're just lining it up so that it all makes sense. So you know when Death in the Family started, you know when Batgirl got paralyzed, you know when Doomsday uh, fought Superman, like you know right. how the Watchmen factor into the DC universe. And so, yeah, I, I look, I understand the, the reaction to relaunches and reboots. Like you said, we're in a vicious cycle yeah. of them right now. But I don't necessarily think that's what this is. I don't so, either. Yeah. And especially because they made a point in their press release in their own like promo of it to say that it's like tying into Wonder, Wonder Woman. Seven fifty, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that if their whole her whole thing is based in like restructuring the continuity, like you just said, then it doesn't make sense for it to be a relaunch. Yeah, exactly. And I like the idea of Wally West is getting this redemption arc and like, well, I guess supposed redemption arc. He's like trying to fix all the damage that's been done to the timeline, which is probably not going to work out. Like, it's an interesting it idea. Does. You know, it never does. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm taking a we'll see approach. Like, and when and if it doesn't turn out too well, then so be it. <laughs> like, I'm sure we'll complain about it. Then. We've been there before. We will yeah. get ready to complain again. But yeah, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful about all this.